Hey everyone, welcome back to the Iraqi Dinar channel. If you've been following the news lately, you've probably heard about the bold statement made by Alak, a prominent figure in global financial circles. He's calling for a major shift in how oil prices are handled in the national budget. Right now, oil is pegged at $70 per barrel in the budget, but Alak says it should be lowered to $40. This has raised a lot of eyebrows. So, what's behind this suggestion, and why is Alak so confident about this change? That's exactly what we're going to break down today. For the sake of long-term economic stability, we need to adjust the oil price in the national budget to $40 per barrel. This isn't just about oil, it's about ensuring that our economy can absorb future shocks that are inevitable. And with the new exchange rate policies coming in 2025, we'll have to be proactive in making these adjustments now. So Alak has thrown down a pretty strong statement here, but what does he mean by this? Let's break it down step by step and try to understand what's driving this shift, especially when the current price of oil stands at $70. Why is Alak suggesting such a dramatic adjustment? First, let's talk about oil prices in general. Oil is one of the most volatile commodities in the world. It's affected by a huge number of factors geopolitics, supply chains, production limits set by OPEC, and of course demand. Right now, $70 per barrel might seem like a reasonable price given current market conditions, but Alak is suggesting that this might not be sustainable for much longer. One of the most important points that Alak is making is that $70 per barrel could be setting us up for trouble in the near future. Oil prices have been quite high in recent years, but they can also swing wildly. We've seen how unpredictable oil prices can be, and setting the price in the budget too high could lead to imbalances, especially when looking ahead to 2025. The $40 per barrel price that Alak is proposing is not just an arbitrary number. He's anticipating a more stable price point that takes into account future global trends, including the shifting dynamics in the global energy market. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Alak's argument is also tied to a major change that's expected to happen in 2025 in new exchange rate policy. If you've been following the global financial markets, you know that currency values are always in flux. But there's a bigger shift on the horizon that could dramatically affect the value of the dollar and, in turn, the global price of oil. Currently, the price of oil is denominated in U.S. dollars, meaning that fluctuations in the dollar's value can have a direct impact on how much oil costs in other currencies. If the dollar weakens or undergoes significant changes in 2025 due to inflation, monetary policy changes, or global economic factors oil could end up costing more than it does today even if production levels stay the same. On the flip side, if the dollar strengthens, oil might appear to be cheaper, but that could also create instability for producers who rely on oil revenue. Alak knows that with the new exchange rate coming in 2025, this adjustment needs to be made now in the budget to avoid financial mismanagement later. If the value of the dollar changes dramatically and oil prices go up unexpectedly, a budget based on $70 per barrel would create a huge fiscal hole that could destabilize the economy. By preparing with a more conservative figure of $40, the government is hedging against this risk. This kind of forward-looking policy is crucial for managing the long-term health of an economy. Alak isn't just thinking about oil prices today, he's anticipating a much larger economic shift that could have ripple effects across the entire global market. But there's more. Alak is not just adjusting the price of oil for the sake of exchange rates. He's looking ahead to what oil demand might look like in 2025 as well. The world is changing rapidly from the transition to green energy, to shifting production strategies, to evolving geopolitical conflicts. As the world continues to move toward renewable energy sources, oil demand might start to flatten or even decrease in the coming decades. This could have significant implications for the oil market, as fewer nations rely on fossil fuels for energy production. Countries that depend heavily on oil exports may see reduced revenues, while others will look to diversify their energy portfolios. This shift in the energy landscape, combined with the anticipated changes in exchange rates, creates a very uncertain environment. Alak is aware of these changes, and by proposing a lower oil price, he's suggesting a more cautious, flexible approach. A price of $40 per barrel might not only account for exchange rate fluctuations, but also prepare the economy for a future in which oil is no longer the dominant global commodity. So how does this impact you, the everyday person? Well, a lower oil price in the national budget could have wide-reaching effects on your daily life. Let's start with the obvious gas prices. 
If the price of oil is budgeted at $40, we might see a stabilization in fuel prices, which could help keep your commute costs in check. But it doesn't stop there. Oil is a key ingredient in the cost of nearly everything. From the transportation of goods to the production of plastics and chemicals, a lower oil price in the budget could lead to lower costs across the board. You could see reduced prices for consumer goods, potentially lower energy bills, and even a reduction in inflationary pressures. On the flip side, some sectors of the economy might not be so thrilled. For example, oil producers and energy companies could feel the pinch if oil prices are set too low. Lower oil prices could lead to less investment in oil exploration and production, which could hurt jobs and revenues in those sectors. So, while consumers might benefit in the short term, there are long-term risks to consider as well. So, is Alok's call for a $40 oil price the right move? It's clear that he's making a strategic play, anticipating global economic changes, currency fluctuations, and evolving energy markets. But there's still uncertainty. The real question is whether the government can accurately predict the full scope of these changes and adjust its fiscal policies accordingly.